I see you lost inside your circumstance and I see you looking for a chance to dance and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you you were made to shine just like the stars above and I know you are made for love and to be loved and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you oh why do we see one another and compare our lives together thinking that the greener grass is anywhere but here shine shine set your eyes on things above now shine shine you are someone made for love now shine shine join in the applause of love and shine ain't it grand life is so worth celebrating Hey, this is Al Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush, who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have, whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass it on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. Welcome, 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 welcome on in, everybody, to the John Morgan Show. I am so honored, so glad to have you here with me today. Welcome, Mame. Welcome, Heather. Oh, yeah. Now I can see. that if somebody can tell me I would be so grateful because every time the show is live I've got to go to my Facebook over here and you know I've told you this before it's just crazy and there's a little bit of uh, am I gonna do it? is it gonna happen to am I gonna 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 Hello, Melania. Oh, good to see both of you. Heather and Mamay. All right. Bam. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the John Morgan Show. I am your host, John Morgan, not an attorney. And I don't play one on TV, but I do play a president on TV. And I've had, in fact, I actually play a couple of presidents on TV and Willie Nelson. So <laughs> not always on TV, but, you know, on stage and uh, in your house and just wherever I get a chance to show up. It's kind of a crazy, crazy way to fulfill a lifelong dream. When I was, when I was a little kid, I used to have this reoccurring dream that I would get on my bicycle and just ride, 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 like all day long, just ride down the highway. And then I would just pick out a house out of random, 
randomness, random act of house picking. And I would go up to that house and I would knock on the door and I would go in and live with that family for an unknown amount of time until it was time to leave and go live somewhere else. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to, uh, uh, fulfill that dream because it's just, you know, the kind of dream you have when you're a little kid. But the thing is, it wasn't a scary dream. It was an awesome dream. And I, and I love, even to this day, meeting new people is so much fun for me. It's such a thrill, such a privilege to get a chance because when you meet someone, there's a connection that is deeper than a casual, hello, how are you? When you look into someone's eyes, the, 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 uh, the eyes are the window to the soul. And if you look carefully, you can see more than pupil and cornea and retina and little red squiggly lines. You can actually see emotion. You can see a lot of pain oftentimes. You can see sadness. You can see darkness. And you can see incredible light because Jesus is the light of the world. And then he turned to his disciples and he said, you are the light of the world. And my friends, you guys, uh uh-oh, Kathy's coming in. Is everything good? Yes, but other people are on too. Yes, hello. But my comments aren't coming through for some reason. It says, comments aren't available. Hang on, let let me see if I can fix this. Oh, I didn't fix it. I thought I fixed my See, that's what I'm talking about. You you every t- every every show I have to See, I thought I'd, I I thought I had no comments so far. All right, Richie, good to see you there you all are. Karen, Heather, uh, Beth. I appreciate you guys. Carol. I didn't know anybody was even on yet because I wasn't seeing the comments because For some reason, my Facebook Live defaults to private, which means none of your comments show up. And and every time, as Ted, good to see you. Mary, greetings. Every time the show is on, I have to go during the show as it's happening and make that adjustment, and it's just insane. But as I was talking, I see you. And that's, you know, uh, when I do my comedy show, I make a big deal out of that three-letter sentence, I see you, I see you. A three-letter sentence that's so important, every hospital has a wing named after it. (laughs) And uh, I like the letter C. It's a good letter because I see you. And when you see someone, you, you really see them. When you look into their eyes and you're really looking and you're really caring and you're really paying attention, the countenance of the person that you're talking with will reveal what's going on in the life behind the countenance. And C is a great letter. I like C. From C to shining C. C, C, writer. Yes. But D is my favorite letter. You know why? Because it's the first letter in the word W. <laughs> I like that. You know, every letter starts with its with the sound of itself. T sounds like a T, but W is a weird one because it starts with a a D, and that's just weird. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Today I'm oh man, the reverse camera makes it so odd. Today I'm wearing my George W. Bush Warrior Open golf shirt. And uh, because I wanted to talk a little bit about golf today. I- I've had some escapades on the golf course. And, uh, and I thought I'd share a few of them with you as it pertains to the word and the emotion of fear. But before we get into that, I made the decision that I would turn you guys on to a little bit of my book, War on Fear and give you kind of a little introduction to it. Michelle, hello, how are you? See, I've not done this yet, Michelle, for if this is your first time on the show. I appreciate you so much. And my sweet sister, I see you, Janet, on the show. That's so awesome. I, uh, I dedicated the book to my beautiful wife, Kathy. 
to my bride, Kathy, you gave yourself to me. What courage. And trust me, folks, it took courage because she knew a lot about me and she married me anyway. And I think that she deserves a round of applause. And she's sitting right over there. Yay, babe, I love you. She married a golf nut. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. She married a nut that plays golf. You didn't when we got married. Yes. All right. See, my dad was a huge, was, he was the original. If you look up golf nut in the dictionary, you would see my dad's picture. He, he was, he, I mean, if he wasn't playing golf, he was thinking golf. One time he had to get an MRI. Is that, is that what they call that thing where you go... They they put you in the tube, babe, and they make and it's really loud. Okay, to to distract himself while he was in there, in his imagination, he played an entire round of golf. And I know some golf nuts. Okay, my friend Greg, my great great best buddy Greg, is a golf nut, and he's he loves golf so much that I think. All right, this is this almost sounds preposterous to me. It, no, no. It sounds preposterous to me, but I think Greg can remember every golf shot he's ever shot. He can remember. I mean, I play a, I play a game of golf, and it's gone. It's, it's gone before I order beer at the 19th hole, okay? But Greg remembers everything. If I, if, if I see a turtle, okay, on the golf course, that I'll remember. Because usually I'll take video of it and a picture so I can show my wife when we get home. A gal alligator, anything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. But uh, I don't remember the, the uh, shots and I don't remember much about it. It's just, it just doesn't matter to me. I, I, I'm, it's not what's, you know. Anyway, people are different. People are different. My dad, my, I have an uncle. He's in heaven now. Bill, Uncle Bill. Golf pro a teaching golf pro and he had his own huge you know we were all shocked at his funeral because all these people showed up that we never knew they were his golf students that loved and revered him he's he was one of those guys that through the game of golf he had a tremendous impact in the lives of many many young men and that that was really wild it was a there was a side of him that we just didn't know. He was just Uncle Bill, you know. But here's the introduction to War on Fear. I thought I would just share this with you. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. Jack Kangfield. Don't be afraid. Luke 12, 32. What if? What if everyone could achieve their highest potential? What if fear was a tool to be harnessed and used rather than an overlord keeping us all in bondage? Could we all be filled with joy, growing, changing, adapting, inventing? Growth is natural. Fear inhibits growth. Its effect on our lives has cost this world great benefit. What if spring never sprang, birds never sang, eagles never flew? What if fear held in check every speck of color from our world? What we would miss if the Wright brothers never flew, if Edison had given up, if Armstrong had chosen fear rather than to take that giant leap for mankind and land us on the moon. We benefit from the bold and the daring, yet still we sigh. Alone in the prison of our own personal fear, we regret. How much we've missed, how much the world has gone without, not because we couldn't, but because we were afraid. Fear is trusting in the wrong thing. I hear a new song rising up. I see a new day approaching, a new way, a fresh new boldness that says, let's do this. Let's go there. Enough of this beige life of blending in. This doesn't look like God's intention. He didn't create birds so they wouldn't fly. He didn't create the sun not to shine or flowers not to bloom or man not to thrive. We were made to rock this life, not cower in the corner. Men, rise up. Women, stand up. Let's defeat this clear and present enemy called fear and come to bask in that for which we were created. 
This book was written to rile you up, to provoke you to anger against the fear that has robbed us and robbed from us every day. It's the f same fear that robs our loved ones, too. May I ask you a question? Were you created to rise to your God-given potential and maximize this life he put within you? If so, let us accept his gracious, adventurous invitation rather than choose the safety of the bland. Come on, friend, enough! The world is missing your contribution. Uh, where am I? Okay. How fun the journey of breaking free. How high the thrill. Let's go to war together. Do you try to ignore your fears? Do you try not to rouse them, hoping for peace? How much, how sad to miss much that you could accomplish. Fear takes its own prisoners. I was one of them. For the majority of my young life, I let fear keep me, own me. I dreamed of doing, I dreamed of becoming. Do you? Each decision affects your future, and this moment can change everything. You are one of the heroes, but at the moment you may be a POF, a prisoner of fear. You're called to influence those around you. Seeds of world-changing greatness are within you. Conquering fear is vital for fulfilling your purpose, achieving your dreams. I knew a guy who worked in a wholesale warehouse who discovered a bump on his head. He was so afraid it was cancer that he wouldn't go to the doctor to get it checked out. Over time, I watched that bump get bigger and bigger. Sadly, fear claimed his life. Fear is expensive. It'll cost you. Courage is to dare in the face of risk, from small gestures of love toward a neighbor to launching that business venture you've dreamed of for years. How much is fear holding you back? 10%? 90%? Fear is false. Worry, a waste. How much time do we waste fretting and then find the task was much easier than we feared it would be? I've said it myself. That was easy. All that needless dread. Fear owned me. It dictated my choices. Finally, I got really angry. Now I'm fighting back. I'm doing battle against a soul-sucking enemy and loving every minute of it. Friend, come with me on this journey, grabbing the adventure for which you were created. I'm having a blast fighting fear in my life, routing out an enemy bent on my destruction. I want to equip you step by step weapon by weapon, to rise up and become who you were created to be and do what you were created to do. It's time to join the battle. It's time to joyfully fight and win the war on fear. And that's the introduction to my book, War on Fear. I, I got a call today from a company that was asking me about the book. They saw, they saw it on Amazon. They saw the five-star rating, and they read a bunch of the reviews, and they saw that it seemed to really be helping people, and they, they wanted to ask me about it. And it was fun to recollect my why, why I started the book in the first place. It was because I was tired. I was sick and tired of letting fear keep me from taking action, from taking movements toward the things that were dreams in my heart. And I, and, I, and I was angry, too, for my friends because my friends were also held in bondage to that same enemy as prisoners of fear, like, like in a cage, invisible bars, but bars nonetheless. They, they stop you. You try to get past them, and they, they keep you from, from doing the things that are in your heart. And uh, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't read War on Fear, uh, and you'd like a copy, you can grab it. Just go to waronfearbook.com, and, and uh, I think it'll serve you. You can also get it, by the way, on um, Audible, audible.com. And if you don't have an audible.com account, then you can pick War on Fear as your first book, and it'll actually be free to you. So if you sign up for audible.com, you can pick War on Fear as your very first book, and it'll be free. And that's a pretty cool thing. Well, my dad taught me how to play golf when I was a young, young youngster. And I grew up with the game. Uh, very much enjoyed it, but I, I never enjoyed it nearly as much as I enjoy music. 
and uh, I, re- I have some I have some funny golf recollections, and so I I thought that I would wear my 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 uh, war uh, warrior open shirt because fear was one of the things that kept me from pursuing uh, meeting George W. Bush in the first place. I was I was so afraid he would say, "Would you stop that?" Would you knock it off? You're bugging me. I see you online, and I just hate it. You, you know what fear does? It projects worst-case scenarios into your future for you to sit around and ponder. And and what it does is, is it causes you to suffer the pain of an eventuality that isn't even real. It isn't, hasn't been determined. And most of the times... You know, somebody suggested this to me years ago. If you take the things you're worried about, and instead of worrying about them, which is unbiblical, by the way, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about how you're going to pay your bills. Your heavenly Father knows you need these things, and he will supply them. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you as well. Wow! It's it's a huge promise from our Heavenly Father to provide for us. And uh, so what was suggested to me is take take the things that you're worried about and write them down on a post-it note or something, and then drop them into a box, a worry box. And then go back at the end of the month and look at the things that you were fretting over. And you will find that 90% of them worked themselves out. And they never became a thing. Isn't that amazing? It's crazy. Try it. You'll like it. I promise. Oh, man. So, So I wanted to meet George W. And... Kathy and I were in San Antonio. We had a speaking engagement uh, there in San Antonio. And the next day was the beginning of the Warrior Open, uh, George W. Bush's tournament that he has for uh, wounded warriors every year in Dallas. And so I just find it, because I was writing the book War on Fear, I thought, I can't let this fear stop me. I've got to go. And so Kathy and I drove through the night after our event to get to Dallas by the next morning and um, signed up for the, well, actually, we had already bought our tickets, yeah. And uh, so we, we went to the tournament, went to, I, I went to the pro shop and bought the shirt he was wearing with the same logo on it and started freaking people out, walking around looking like George W. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the tournament. I appreciate you. It's good to see you. Who do you hope wins today? You know, it's a pro-am where uh, they would have some of the world's greatest golfers teamed up with a wounded warrior, and they and the and the, he makes them work. I mean, he makes them have a handicap and 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 uh, qualify for the tournament, which is great because nothing uh, helps people overcome life debilitating injuries like a goal, like a purpose, something to shoot for, and so he gives them that with the Warrior Open every year. He also has. A, a, an awesome bike ride that that the warriors take together, and uh, George W. has dedicated his life to to serving these people who have served, and I just I love that. So so Kathy and I we drove through the night, and uh, hello, you want to say hi to everybody? Are you telling the story when you stole his golf clubs? They haven't seen that yet. They they see that there's clubs here, but they <laughs> they haven't seen the logo. But you know what? Since <laughs> since you brought it up, let me. Uh, yeah, he. He Let's tricked see. George Bush and looking another way, and he grabbed his golf bag. Well, you weren't supposed to tell, babe. <laughs> That's the bag. And as you can see, the presidential seal is there, and then the name George W. Bush is right there. So people, they see that, then they see me, and they go, whoa! <laughs> and, and I've had a lot of fun with that, for sure. But I, but I want to point something out to you that you may not have noticed uh, at first glance. And when I have a presidential seal, I always do this. And it's so funny because nobody ever notices it. Look closely at the seal. It doesn't say president of the United States. It doesn't say the seal of the president of the United States. It says impersonator of the president 
of the United States. And then right in the middle where it's supposed to say, e pluribus unum, it actually says John Morgan. <laughs> and, you know, the George W. Bush is all you see. You don't really notice my signature, John Morgan, as George W. Bush. So it's so fun. Whenever I do a, a show, I'll have that seal on the podium right in front of everybody, and nobody ever notices or that, that has told me that, it, that they notice that it says impersonator of the President of the United States. Because you know why? Your mind does shortcuts. It just glances, it sees presidential seal, and it, it just assumes. It doesn't take the time to read what it says. You know, ha how many of you have ever seen the video of the dancing bear in, in the, within the uh, basketball players? It's, an, it's, a, it's a crazy video. What they do is they, they have um, two teams of basketball players, some wearing white shirts, some wearing black shirts, and they ask you to count how many baskets the, the guys with the white shirts throw or something like that. And so it's like a 15-second video or something. So, so you, I, I should have it on the show. I should pull it up. Um, so you watch it, and you're counting, okay? And, and at the end, you tell them how many you th thought you saw, and then they ask you, but did you see the dancing bear? And everybody just goes, what? <laughs> because the mind focuses on what it's focusing on. And so they, they, they back it up and they play it again. And right through the middle of the basketball players, a dancing bear danced right through the scene and nobody sees it. That's the craziest thing. And that's how our mind works, folks. If you focus on your fears, then they will be happy to uh, compose a reality to you that isn't even real. And one of the huge, huge ways of overcoming fear is not focusing on those lying thoughts. It's just temptation. Um, in the book, we talk about the, the movie Jurassic Park. There's a, there's a scene in that film where this dinosaur is, is chasing... I think he's chasing the kids... And all of a sudden, they run through a room where there's a hologram of another dinosaur. And when the hologram turns on, the other dinosaur stops for a second. And, 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 he, and, and he thinks, oh my gosh, there's another dinosaur. What, who knows what he thinks? He's a dinosaur. And, and, but then he, he's, he goes to attack the hologram. And, it's, and when he attacks the hologram, he realizes... It's not real, and he just walks right through it. And that's how I want you to see your fears. Fears are like mist. What happens to mist when you walk through it? It's just mist. It moves out of your way. I, I remember the first time my family drove to the mountains, and we drove through clouds for the first time, and we got out of the car and walked through the clouds. The clouds moved out of the way. They moved out of the way. And your fears will do that too, folks. So anyway, Kathy and I went to the Warrior Open. Um, we chummed it up with all the people in the crowd. And then uh, they, they kind of pushed us forward because they wanted to, us to get a chance to meet President Bush because that's why we were there, you know. And uh, somebody shouted out to him. I'm, I'm shortcutting because I realize I've been on for uh, 28 minutes already. Um, somebody shouted out to him, Mr. President, your brother's here. And, and, he, and he turned around and looked at me, and I, I kind of waved to him like that. And he made his way over to me, you know, and he goes, wow. You need to, and, and as he was hugging me, a nice tight hug, uh, while Kathy took the picture, here's a, the here's a shot. There it is. He leaned over and said to me, if I had a face like mine, I'd be mad as hell. <laughs> what a great line. Oh, my gosh. Funniest thing ever. Uh-oh. Okay, now that that's there, I don't know how to get rid of it. Well, you know what? On that note, folks, I think I'll bid you adieu and figure, not adieu, adieu, adieu to you and you and you. And thank you so much for tuning in, for hanging out with me. You're the best. I love you. 
And uh, I'm going to close with this wonderful little uh, commentary that a gentleman did after one of my shows. And then we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. And thanks for tuning in. John Morgan came to our church this evening. He entertained us with the impressions of President Bush. I found him very entertaining. I also, surprisingly to me, found him very challenging from a Christian standpoint. I found his thoughts about listening to the Lord, especially when you think he's saying something you really don't want to hear, to pray about it and see if he has some surprise, some great thing in store for your life. That was his experience. And he elevated me to think about that possibility for myself. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm a free world leader. Freedom's rolling out to you. Oh, let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator. Compassionate conversator. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the John Morgan Show. Today's show was brought to you by War on Fear. And you can pick your copy up at waronfearbook.com. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.